What's up gamers, it's time for the sandbox news. This week they updated the developer council, the server creation menu, the Twitch integration test game mode, and the RTS mode. It doesn't look like Construct was updated at all this week, which is okay. Here we can see the updates to the developer council. We can resize the windows, and they added a new entity debugger panel on the left side. We can see all the entities that are in the current server we're in, and we can even click on them and view and change information about them. I'm going to select myself. I'll come down to the floor and go in third person so I can see myself. I can look through and change all the different variables for my player. Oh, th I don't think this is actually the player entity. This is something else. But if I scroll down, I can see the sandbox player. I believe this is me. So I can change the glow. I can make me glow if I want. Ooh, that's weird. The glow isn't applied to my... The glow isn't applied to my clothing. That's an interesting feature. I can adjust my health. I set it to a thousand and now I can... Oh, also the glow. <laughs> I can see the glow in first person. That's kind of strange. Huh. The active child here is actually your weapon. So I can change it to be tool. And maybe, oh no, that didn't actually work. Changing all of these different things might not work as intended, and some things might not work at all. Some things might break the game. Oh, I think in here, I might be able to, I think this is me that's connected to the server. So I wonder if somebody else joined the server, if I would be able to change this entity name to change the person who's controlling this player. I guess that'd be a fun thing to try out. I can scroll down and find, this will be a very noticeable change. So I can set my scale to four and now I'm huge. I don't think there's a limit on how big I can set this. Yeah, I set my scale to a hundred. Now I'm just massive. That's wild. I'll turn off the glow. So I can click on any entity in the whole server and change it. Uh, a lot of these are just called entity, so I really don't know what all of these are. These are the spawn points, the water. Can I make the water glow? How would that look? Uh, I guess it doesn't work on the water. What if I go under it? No, it doesn't do anything. There's a lot of props in here. I'll make one of them glow, and then I should be able to see a glowing red prop, it's this one. So currently you can't click on any of the objects in the game view. I think that would be a cool feature to add though. I can filter by entity name. So I'll filter for prop and then we can see a big list of all the props. Player, or sandbox player, that's me. I can sort by category. So all local has owner. I'm not entirely sure what this is for. Maybe it's for parented entities. And I can see everything on the server and on the client. I'll go back to all. And in addition to entities, you can actually edit panels and other. It doesn't look like other shows anything yet. It has a picture of a particle, so maybe that's for like particles and sounds. If I go to the panels tab on the top here, I can change the, the panel that I'm selecting. So I can change the loading screen and the menu overview. I think this, I don't know what this is, but I can definitely change it. Aha, so it looks like the sandbox.ui.root panel is the HUD for the sandbox game mode. And I can actually click on things in the HUD. And then it looks like I might be able to dynamically adjust them. So I'll change this to be hover. That doesn't seem to do anything. It causes an error. If I change the text here, actually it doesn't change the text because it's this is actually linked to my health value. So it looks like it's not going to update. I wonder if I can change the text on my weapons. No, it doesn't look like this changes it either because it displays the text that's the weapon's name. So if I click off of it and I go back in, yeah, it, it resets to fizz gun. I think I might be able to change the length of these, but I'm not entirely sure how. Either way, this is a very useful tool for debugging. It even shows the size, I guess that's in pixels, of how big each of these elements are. That's pretty useful. 
So I open the Q menu and then I open the console and I can see I can change the values of the spawn menu here. I've actually been holding Q down the whole time, so if I release Q, the spawn menu will go away and the list will get grayed out here because it's not active. That's extremely useful. In addition to all this debugging stuff, they've changed the list on the top here. I believe this shows mostly the same information. I can change the render mode to be full bright, normal map, albedo, which actually seems to be bugged for all of these modes right now. I'm not quite sure why that is. It was working earlier. These three at the top show the wireframe rendering. This is the server side physics. This is client side. They should be basically the same, which they are. And I can see a console overlay. So it'll show all the commands I do and all the errors in the top left corner. And I can see a perf stats. So this is my frame rate and my frame time. Or maybe this is my ping. No, I think that's my frame time. And you can actually move this window around. You can move it anywhere you want. It doesn't look like you can resize it, although I'm not quite sure why you would want to resize it. And when you close the developer console, it'll stick on the screen. We can also see the perf chart. This is a performance chart. I don't entirely know what it means. Maybe if I spawn a lot of boxes, it'll go down or it'll change. Uh, I don't actually know if it does anything yet. Maybe I just don't know how it works. The final thing is entity IO. This will show me different entity interactions. For example, when I break this wall here, um, nothing happened because it didn't actually trigger any entity IO. I actually can't think of any maps right now that have entity IO in them. So I guess this isn't very useful right now, but if you're making custom maps in the future, it's useful. And now I'll open up the Streamlabs game mode. But on my way there, I'm going to show off the new settings in the server creation menu. So I can take a box to set the server to be LAN only, and I can type in a password for the server. Currently, I don't think there's a way to enter a password when you're joining a server. I think you have to open up the console and type SV password and then type in the name of the password for the server. I'm sure in the future they'll add a password prompt when you're joining a server. So this is the Streamlab game mode. It's not in the game yet. I had to download this off GitHub. I'll open it up on Flatgrass. Wow, there's a lot of Flatgrass clones. Here's the official version. Oh, it turns out there's a reason why this isn't in the game yet. They haven't actually added the the raw functionality to the Sandbox API. So the game mode just errors and it doesn't load up yet. I briefly looked at the code and it looks like how this works. Players will join your Twitch channel and then they'll be able to type exclamation point play in your Twitch chat. And then I guess they'll get some sort of player in the game and they have to type W, A, S, and D in the Twitch chat in order to walk around and they can collect coins. I don't know what the coins do. They probably don't do anything. This is probably just a very basic test game mode to show off what you can do using Twitch integration. This won't be exclusive to Twitch, but for now it looks like they're developing mostly with Twitch in mind. I'm sure we'll see support for other platforms in the future. Now it's time for everyone's favorite game mode, the RTS game mode. This week they updated the map even more. So it actually looks really good and they added a mini map and a medic helicopter. So here's the Greenland map. They've done an art pass on it even more. And it actually looks really nice. You can see all the detail. This is starting to look like an actual map from a finished RTS game. It's pretty cool. They added a mini map. Um, I can click on it and it shows me my units. <laughs> I was looking at this game mode a couple minutes ago and there was a map icon here that showed me the layout of the level, but it looks like that's not working right now for some reason. Also, there's a bug with a sandbox where sometimes map entities don't spawn, and it looks like that happened right now. The way to fix that is by restarting the game. Then all the map entities, including all these resources, and maybe even the minimap, will appear. Although I don't think the minimap would be affected by that. I'll build up a bunch of units and get an airfield out so that I can show off the new medic helicopter. I don't actually know the research path for this. Looks like I need to get a vehicle which requires machinery as a research. So machinery, and now once this research is done, I'll be able to get 
a vehicle factory, and then an airfield. Now we can see we have the Medivac, that's the Medic aircraft, and there's also an upgrade that increases the speed of it by 30%. I'll lower my time skill down. And this is the Medic helicopter. It's insane! Look at the wings, it's like it's actually flying. This is pretty crazy. And it's supposed to heal my units. I think it heals them automatically. So I can spawn an enemy unit. Nope. Um, this enemy unit spawned at the world origin. So I'll have to, I think it's right here. Yep, there it is. I don't think this tank will be able to shoot my medic helicopter. Nope. Once my workers get over here, I'll be able to have them take damage. And then the medic helicopter can heal them. It'll be insane. Um, is it going to heal anything? I don't think this medic helicopter- oh, there it goes. That took a while. Yeah, it's healing. This is so realistic. That's wild. Now it's fully healed. I wonder if it just took a while to kick in the first time, or if it's just slow at healing. Yeah, it looks like it's just slow at healing. So with this unit, it looks like you would really want to micromanage with it, at least in its current form. This is all subject to change though, and it might end up functioning totally different later. Well, that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you're looking for something else to watch, you should check out this dev blog video that Eagle One put out on their racing game mode. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm sure it's insane.